In at number 10, Martin Lawrence. On February 19th, 1994, comedian Martin Lawrence was hosting Saturday Night Live. However, unbeknownst to the writers, he had adjusted his opening monologue a bit. As Lawrence went on about feminine hygiene in some very descriptive ways, Lauren Michaels was absolutely fuming. Following that live audible made by Martin, the monologue was then removed from all repeats and replaced with a voiceover instead. He was banned from ever hosting again, and Lauren would make sure that Martin would never even appear on the show, nor have his name mentioned by the cast. So essentially, Martin Lawrence is the Voldemort of Saturday Night Live. In at number 9, The Kardashians. Minutes after Khloe Kardashian tweeted this out, I love Anderson Cooper, hashtag Silver Fox, Cooper said that if he could ban any guest, it would be the entire Kardashian family. While on Andy Cohen's show, Watch What Happens Live, Cohen and Cooper played a game called Plead the Fifth. The question posed to Anderson was, name one person you would ban from your show forever, and as I mentioned, the Kardashians were thrown quickly under the bus. Although Cooper said that it was all in good fun, we still have yet to actually see any of them appear on his show. Not that they have any political opinions they need to be spewing. In at number eight, Hugh Grant. While some accents may sound charming, Hugh Grant's personality canceled out any of that for Jon Stewart at The Daily Show. After appearing on the show, Jon Stewart said he was banning Grant for being a big pain in the ass. Stewart continued saying that he would never grant him back on the show, pun intended. <laughs> During an onstage Q&A, John remarked that they've had dictators on the show, but Hugh Grant was still his least favorite guest. Apparently, Hugh spent most of the day just complaining that he had to be there and even flat out said that he had better things to be doing, for which the staff of The Daily Show didn't really care to hear, nor did Stewart. So thanks to his high maintenance attitude, he was banned from the show with zero apologies. In at number seven, Howie Mandel. Now you'd think because these two were co-hosts on the show, America's Got Talent, that they would have bonded a little bit, but nope. In fact, they probably would have liked each other more if they had never even met. During an interview with Billy Bush and Kit Hoover on Access Hollywood, Pierce said, I actually want to torture and dismember Howie. He is without a doubt the most annoying man in the history of planet Earth. Those are some harsh words, and after Howie pranked Pierce one too many times, he outright banned Mandel from ever appearing as a guest on his independent live shows. In at number six, Vince Vaughn. While promoting his new movie, The Dilemma, they played a trailer on Ellen to promote the movie, and in the trailer was this line. Ladies Ladies and gentlemen, electric cars, they're totally gay. Yeah, he said that on Ellen, live. You gotta imagine the network executives were sweating when that aired. For a long time, Vaughn was banned from ever appearing on the show again. However, after many years had passed and probably a few phone calls apologizing, the pair have made amends and he did come back on seven years later. In at number five, Gilbert Gottfried. With the way Godfrey performs, you would think this rude dude would be a repeat guest on The Howard Stern Show. And the funny thing is, no one actually knows why Gilbert was banned from the show in the first place. Some believe that it was from an interaction with Stern's wife, while others think that Howard got sick of having him on. Although Gilbert didn't really seem to care, as you can see from his Instagram post. He also then would team up with fellow band guest Artie Lang to make this video trolling Howard Stern. Artie and me on with Howard to my oh, no. <laughs> In at number four, Jay Leno. Believe it or not, for our next celebrity live TV band, there's a Wikipedia page for it. It's called the 2010 Tonight Show Conflict, and man, oh man, is it jam-packed with late night talk show drama. Jay Leno had been the host of The Tonight Show since 1992, and Conan had hosted Late Night since 1993. Both shows had excellent ratings, but when Conan's contract was ending, NBC promised him that they would make O'Brien the host of The Tonight Show, which was huge because it was in a much better time slot, and it's obviously a dream for most talk show hosts to do that. However, they neglected to tell Leno about any of this. So when Jay's contract ended, they shifted Conan into The Tonight Show spot, and Jay ended up going before primetime news. Unfortunately, both shows started to tank in the ratings, causing the networks to get nervous. After watching their views decline, they panic and ask the host to switch back. Leno was for it, Conan O'Brien, not so much. He instead took another offer and started his own show simply called Conan. And the first rule he put in order, Jay Leno was banned. In at number three, Steven Seagal. Back in 1991, Steven Seagal wasn't chomping on carrots and using too much Just For Men in his beard. He was a big action star. So needless to say, most people were excited to see him hosting Saturday Night Live. Unfortunately, the cast found him extremely difficult to work with. Norm MacDonald even said that he told them he didn't want to be in any of the sketches, which is typically something that every host just does. He did eventually oblige their request, but the cast was so fed up with him that they almost did the show with no host at all. Seagal was 
was then banned by Lord Michaels immediately after for being, as he so eloquently put it, the worst host ever. In fact, in 2014, Michaels told New York Magazine that when Nicolas Cage was hosting, he worried that he wasn't doing well and said during his monologue that he hopes he wasn't the worst host ever. Without missing a beat, Lauren walked on stage to reassure him that no, that was Steve Seagal. In at number two, Joan Rivers. The late great Joan Rivers was always a recurring and outstanding guest on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. His show was without a doubt what launched her career, and the two bonded over the years with Rivers even getting the coveted spot on the couch next to Carson. However, when Joan was approached by several big television networks to start her own show, she did so without telling Johnny Carson. Many other guests had followed a similar trajectory, but each had asked for Johnny's blessing. Putting that on a shirt, they asked for Johnny Carson's approval, essentially. Johnny was devastated when Joan did this without telling him, namely because her show ran opposite him as competition. Carson then had NBC ban Joan Rivers from ever appearing on the show again, a rule that both Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien adhered to well after Johnny had passed away. Last but not least in our number one spot, Kathy Griffin. Although the photo shoot had nothing to do with the live to air show, Kathy Griffin was blacklisted hard when this photo appeared online. In 2017, the comedian became a magnet for controversy after posting a photo of herself holding a ketchup covered head that looked eerily similar to Donald Trump. I suppose the networks were frightened of this PR disaster and so Leno, Conan, Ellen, The View, Live with Regis and Kelly, The Today Show, and Letterman all banned Kathy Griffin from coming on live TV. CNN would also go on to announce that they relieved Griffin of her New Year's Eve coverage duties, a job that she had with the network for close to a decade. President Donald Trump even responded to the graphic imagery when he tweeted this out. Kathy Griffin should be ashamed of herself. My children, especially my 11 year old son, Baron, are having a hard time with this. Sick. Griffin did end up apologizing and said that even as a comedian, she knows that she crossed the line. Adding, the image is too disturbing. I understand how it offends people. It was not funny. I get it. Beginning our countdown list at number 10 is Madonna. This one surprised me because I couldn't believe who would ban the queen of pop and what she could have done to make someone that angry. Back in 2011, Piers Morgan made a public statement saying that he would never allow her to return as a guest on his CNN show at the time. During CNN's Television Critics Association winter session, he referred to Madonna as, I quote, an irritant in my life for 20 years. He never truly revealed why he has so much hate for her, but said that there has been a series of incidents throughout the years. He called them a series of crimes, which has me believe that it's not as serious as he is making it seem. But regardless of what I think, he added that she would not be allowed on a show unless she made a public apology to CNN. After she got banned, there were a bunch of rumors going around on what the true reasoning could be, but nothing has ever been confirmed. There still seems to be bad blood between them because in September of 2020, he went on a rant about her and said she acts like she's 62 going on 20 and said that she doesn't know how to age gracefully. So he is clearly still butthurt over whatever happened. And I want to know what it is. Next up at number nine, we have Gary Busey. He is a talented man who got into a tragic motorcycle accident back in 1988, which ended up giving him severe brain damage. Ever since that moment, his life changed forever as his behavior got more erratic and uncontrollable. Throughout different interviews, he's shown fans that he has multiple personalities, which some people might get a kick out of, but Howard Stern is not one of those people. Gary actually got banned from the Howard Stern show after one of his interviews where he displayed wild and bizarre behavior. He picked up Howard's co-host in a wild bear hug stunt and also wrestled Howard to the floor in the middle of the interview. Howard has said that he feels some guilt banning him to return from the show, but admits that he simply just cannot handle him. While some people argue that this decision was very insensitive, obviously to his brain damage, others agreed with him and said that everyone handles things differently. But I wanna know what you guys think of this. Do you think it's fair that he banned him because obviously he can't control his behavior sometimes? It's a tricky situation. Speak of the devil, coming in at number eight, we have Howard Stern. Throughout his career as a talk show host, he has issued a few different bans on other celebrities. The ban came from a longtime feud he had with Jay Leno, which started after Howard accused him of stealing bits from his show. I feel like this would happen often with talk shows since they are all so similar and they are trying to make their show stand out among the rest. But that was not the only reason. There was also some chaos between them back in 1995 when Howard appeared on a show and brought two nearly naked women on stage and started sucking on their toes. 
it was super random, awkward, and uncomfortable. And Leno was so mad with his crazy behavior that he just ended the show early and walked off during the middle of it, which I would have done too, because that's absolutely disgusting. Taking the number seven spot is Kelsey Grammer. He too was banned from Piers Morgan Live, which has me wonder if Piers just kind of throws bans around, like it's no big deal. But he slapped a lifetime ban on the Frasier actor after he appeared on the show. The reasoning? Well, during the interview, the network showed a photograph of his ex-wife, Camille Grammer, after they promised that their relationship would not be discussed during that interview. He was so angry about it getting brought up that he walked off the set during the middle of the appearance and did not come back to finish his interview. Obviously, this would not be a good look on the show, but it also came across as really dramatic on Kelsey's side. At the end of the day though, Kelsey stated that he does not care about being banned from the show and said that he doesn't even think about it. Moving on to number six, we have Bill Hicks. Back in 1993, David Letterman banned the comedian from the show after he did a stand-up set which was filled with some controversial content. He ended up getting banned from the show and the network never aired his comedy because of the alleged offensive content that was in it. David Letterman later talked about it and said he felt pressure from the network executives who said the content would be offensive and bad for the show. Bill Hicks ended up passing away in 1994 and years down the road, Letterman wanted to make it right. In 2009, he brought Bill's mother on the show and finally aired his original comedy set from his interview back in 1993. He apologized on the show and said it was an error in judgment and a mistake to not show his set. He also apologized and talked to his mother on the show and they watched his set together with the rest of the audience. David said that it was his way to try and fix his mistake. Halfway through our list, number five is Piers Morgan. Once again, the roles are reversed and the talk show host who is used to banning other people was the one being banned. Rosie O'Donnell was the one who banned him from her talk show, The Rosie Show, to show her loyalty to one of her friends. Turns out she was a good friend of Madonna's at the time when Piers banned her from a show. So since Rosie was her friend, she lashed back at Piers and said that she was banning him from her show. So that is just some serious girl code. Those are the type of friends you want in your life. Rolling into number four, we have Andy Kaufman. The actor got himself banned from Saturday Night Live back in 1983. The show's producer at the time, Dick Ebersol, banned him in a very dramatic way. Andy had appeared on the show many times during the first season, being a huge contribution to the early days of SNL. But his jokes and acting were unpredictable and a lot of the times inappropriate. Improvisation is a huge part of SNL, which can either be a success or a complete risk. In 1983, the producer had enough and decided to make a show of it by asking the audience whether Andy should stay or leave the show. The final tally was 195,000 for removing him from the show and 169,000 for keeping him on. So obviously he was kicked off the show and was not allowed to return. Sadly though, he passed away just one year after this event. In our third spot is Adrian Brody. He was another celebrity who was banned from Saturday Night Live. He was removed from the list of potential future hosts after his appearance back in 2003. During his appearance, he walked on stage to introduce Sean Paul, the Jamaican reggae musician, and wore fake dreadlocks and talking with a fake Jamaican accent. For obvious reasons, people were not thrilled about how offensive it was for cultural appropriation, but the producer at the time, Lauren Michaels, was not happy either. It's been said that he actually hates when celebrities go unscripted while hosting the show, so he actually banned him from ever coming back. But despite him getting banned, the network had no problem allowing other celebrity members to impersonate Brody on SNL back in 2012. Winning our number two spot is Chevy Chase. He was one of the first stars in the original Saturday Night Live cast back in 1975. He also was the first cast member to get banned from the show. Man, a lot of people get banned from SNL. Although the ban came long after he left on his own terms. So he left the show after two successful years and then returned eight different times to host Saturday Night Live. During his eighth time hosting, he got officially banned from ever returning after he hit another cast member in the back of the head. Yes, that'll do it. Will Ferrell reported him after he apparently witnessed the physical assault. But over the years, he has gotten on better terms with the creator, Lauren Michaels, and although he was banned from hosting, they have allowed him on to do smaller appearances. So it seems like his ban has been officially like retracted, but only for the hosting part. I don't really know. In our number one spot is David Bowie. 
Who on earth would ban David Bowie? He is the rock and roll legend, and it's hard to imagine that anyone would not want him as a guest on their show. So what happened? Back in 1997, he went on SNL and did not make the producer Lauren Michaels very happy. Lauren had booked him to come on the show and perform his song Telling Lies, which was his most recent single at the time. He also asked specifically that he not perform his song Scary Monsters and Super Creeps, as it allegedly reminded him of some dark times. But he did not listen and he ended up performing the song anyways. After that, he banned him from the show for three years. Kicking off our list number 10 is Vivica A. Fox. Back in 2005, the Kill Bill actress appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to promote her new Lifetime show. Anyone who watches his talk show knows that he is one to make jokes, but some of them did not go over too well with Vivica. Jimmy used this opportunity to make some jokes about her friend, Star Jones, who is a host on The View, and she she just didn't like that very much. She was clearly upset and the interview immediately turned cold. Jimmy tried to smooth things over and continue having the interview, but she just stopped having it and got up and left mid-interview. She never returned back to the stage to finish the show, so Jimmy actually continued it without her and told the crowd that she would never be allowed to come back. However, um, I think most people can agree that she probably wouldn't want to come back anyways when you uh, make in front of her friend. Up next, number nine is Snead O'Connor. I probably said that wrong. I get it wrong every time. She rose to fame in the 80s as a popular singer and has always been known for her controversial views about politics and personal beliefs. So it's not all that surprising that something could happen during an interview that would have her not invited back for another one. She is just another person to have been banned from Saturday Night Live after she pulled a stunt that just went too far. The show is meant to make people laugh right? But uh, she didn't do that. She went on the show and performed and while she was singing a cover of Bob Marley's War, she took out a picture of Pope John Paul II and started reciting the word evil and then went on to rip it in half and say, fight the real enemy. Really weird. The entire studio was just shocked and left in complete silence, most likely just feeling super uncomfortable, not knowing how to react to that. After that, she was not invited back and she was banned from appearing on the show ever again. Especially performing, if anything. Moving on to number eight, we have Bobcat Goldthwait. Goldthwait? Goldthwait. The comedian had issues when he appeared on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno back in 1994. Usually when a guest goes on talk show, they sit on a couch and do an interview. They don't set it on fire. Yeah, Bobcat is not the typical guest that people would normally have on their show, apparently. He went on the show and decided that during the interview, he would pull out a lighter and set his chair on fire. Jay Leno actually put it out with one of the cups of water that he had, but he made the comedian sit back in the chair, which was then burnt and covered in water. Bobcat ended up getting fined over $3,000 for the stunt and was banned from the show for a week. On top of that, he was also forced to record a public service announcement about fire safety. His banishment was only a week long though on the show and he did reappear after that. In spot number seven is Kim Burrell. Ellen DeGeneres seems like a pretty accepting person. You would think it would take a lot to get banned from her show. Well, one thing she will not tolerate is homophobic people or homophobic behavior. She was supposed to have gospel singer Kim Burrell on the show, but then she went on Facebook Live and made some homophobic comments. Reports say she was banned from the show before she even went on. Turns out that she was scheduled to go on Ellen's show and promote the film Hidden Figures with Pharrell, but Ellen confirmed that she did not want Kim on the show. She explained what happened and said, her name is Kim Burrell. She made a statement she was doing a Facebook Live and she said some very not nice things about homosexuals. So I didn't feel that it was good of me to have her on the show to give her a platform after she was saying these things about me. Do you agree with Ellen's decision? Uh, I wanna know, let me know in the comments. If I was a homosexual, I probably would not want a homophobic person on my show or someone who makes homophobic comments. Coming up next, number six is Milton Berle. To say he is important to television is an understatement. His nickname is literally Mr. Television. Many people say that he is actually the reason people take TV comedy so seriously. He even invented the idea of celebrity roast thanks to his founding of the Friars Club. So having him on to host Saturday Night Live made a lot of sense at the time. 
time. The only problem was he wanted to take more control over the episode than the creator Lauren Michaels wanted him to have. Turns out he added some old comedy bits to the sketches totally unannounced and without approval. Reports say he didn't take any directions that he was given and took it upon himself to give directions to the lighting crew and the stagehands. He insisted on using inappropriate jokes and dialogues in his scripts and even arranged a standing ovation from family and friends without warning the producers. Lauren Michaels was obviously not thrilled about this and uh, he was banned from the show. We are halfway through at number five. We have Robert Blake. Guess what? Another person banned from Saturday Night Live. It seems like getting banned from the show happens more often than any other talk show on this list. In 2001, Robert's wife, Bonnie Lee Backley, was tragically killed. Some people knew her from the iconic Little Rascals movie. In 2005, Blake was actually accused of being the one who pulled the trigger. He underwent a very lengthy and controversial trial, but was found not guilty in the end. Many people would think that this might be the reason that he was banned from SNL, but it actually was not, but it kind of goes hand in hand. He actually hosted the show before this scandal back in 1982 and showed off a very vicious temper in the process. Reports say he was insulting cast members, crumpled up a script and threw it at one of the writers and had a very nasty attitude towards people involved. He ended up getting banned from the show and a lot of people correlate his angry temper history with the murder trial that happened down the road. I don't know, I ain't trying to point fingers, but like, mm. Rolling into the number four spot is Charles Grodin. The deadpan actor is known for being very talented at his craft, so why was his late night comedy sketch so bad to a point where he was banned from returning? Fans expected nothing less than perfection from him when he went on an episode of Saturday Night Live back in 1977. Everyone thought he was gonna crush it, which he really should have, but things did not go to plan. Charles went on to host the show and wanted to play a character rather than himself. He wanted to play Charles Grodin, SNL host, who was bad Bad at hosting SNL. He played up this character and deliberately forgot his lines and ad-libbed his way through all of the sketches and basically just bombed the entire thing. He literally kept pretending that he didn't know the show was live. It was um, a nightmare. Lauren Michaels obviously had enough and he was banned from coming back. Poor Lauren Michaels having to ban all these people. Taking over our third spot is Louise Lasser. She was best known for her 1970s soap opera parody, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. She loved what she was doing at the time and you could tell with how it came out through her craft and her character. But you could also tell how she had a miserable time hosting Saturday Night Live because it very much showed. She was actually the first person, reports say, to ever get banned from this show, the very first. During her opening monologue, she mentioned that Mary Hartman was in the middle of having a nervous breakdown. She then started to emulate her character and started rambling about how scared she was to be on live television and she locked herself in her dressing room. Like she literally locked herself in her dressing room during her opening monologue. <laughs> Other cast members tried to coax her out of the room, but only Chevy Chase was successful. But even after the show continued on, she kept forgetting her lines and the episode ended with her sitting on the floor, like the studio floor, talking about her problems and how she was having a mental breakdown. She was banned from the show, but in 2013, she said that she intentionally made it look like she was having a breakdown because she didn't feel comfortable performing the sketches that they had written for her. Just don't go on the show if you don't want to do the sketches. <laughs> Up next, number two, we have Heather Mills. She is just another star that was banned from the Piers Morgan show, who has actually released a list in the past of everyone that he has banned from his show. So he's not very shy about the topic, to say the least. Heather is the ex-wife of Paul McCartney and was banned from his show after she and Paul got divorced back in 2008. She was given a $50 million settlement for the divorce and since Piers was friends with Paul, he didn't feel right having her on his show. In fact, he actually introduced the couple in the first place, so he took his buddy's side and kind of slapped a lifetime ban against her. He has also said it is the least he could do for his friend to make up for the financial and emotional pain that she caused his friend. And he also referred to her as a gold digger. So they're not on good terms. Winning the number one spot is Oprah Winfrey. Bet you're a little surprised. She is arguably the biggest name in broadcast television. Who wouldn't want to have her on their show? 
talk about ratings. David Letterman, apparently. The two of them had a feud that lasted over 25 years and Oprah actually refused to go on his show again, which ended up with him saying that she's never allowed. Letterman admitted that he played up the tension between them on his show to get laughs out of the audience and says it all started when Oprah allegedly snapped at him on the phone when he called her to invite her back on his show. Oprah says she did the appearance on his show and felt very uneasy due to his rowdy audience and just didn't feel comfortable going on again. So she said, um, no. So he banned her. <laughs> the feud lasted way too long. And once he stopped talking about her, like on his show and making funny shots at her, they were able to make up and they have been on each other's show ever since. So this one has a happy ending. In at 10, Bjork. Oh, Bjork, she has had a rough life. Not only did she have to go through the grueling process of working with Lars von Trier, who she openly hated and admitted to spitting in his face every day. She also had a crazed stalker who ended up killing himself on camera, which in turn was uploaded to YouTube, so you can imagine Bjork would be a little high strung. Well back in 1996, Bjork arrived at the airport in Thailand, only to be greeted by paparazzi and reporters wanting interviews. The singer was with her children and by the time one of the reporters stated, welcome to Thailand, she had had enough and began to attack her, knocking her to the ground and striking her repeatedly. Not a good look for the singer, violence is never the answer, but you can also understand a mother wanting to protect her children. Coming in at 9, Vanilla Ice. Remember Vanilla Ice, the one hit wonder who blessed us with Ice Ice Baby? Ice Ice Baby. Well, he must have known his 15 minutes of fame were coming to an end back in 1999, because he accelerated his demise when he appeared on the MTV Lane 25. Prior to The Daily Show, Jon Stewart used to host a show along with Dennis Leary, Chris Kattan and Janine Garofalo called MTV's Lame 25. Five, where the host would make fun of music videos that aired on MTV's network and then would proceed to destroy the tape. However, on this particular occasion, the Vanilla Ice Guilty Pleasure found itself at number 9 on the list, so what went down? Well, the rapper proceeded to show up at the studio, as planned, and took a baseball bat to his tape for this song. However, it didn't stop there, he ended up taking the bat to the entire set, absolutely terrifying everyone in the process, something that definitely wasn't planned. And the popcorn for everybody! <laughs> Sorry about the set there, guys. I, well, the tape's fine. <laughs> what? Everything else is no, no, no. Coming in at eight, David Hasselhoff. It is common knowledge that former actor David Hasselhoff used to battle with alcohol and drug addiction. The things hit rock bottom for the actor back in 2007 when his daughter filmed him in his Las Vegas home on a bender and eating a burger. The Baywatch legend was seemingly as drunk as could be, so he ordered burgers and sloppily ate them on the floor of his bathroom, wearing nothing but a pair of blue jeans. This video is heartbreaking to watch and listen to because in the background you can hear a 16 year old daughter begging for him to grow up. However, what makes this video interesting is that his daughter was filming him because David had reportedly asked her to if he were to ever fall off the wagon, and that he did. Thankfully, Hasselhoff got sober and is still a pop culture icon to this day, milking appearances and making the odd cameo in bad movies, even the Baywatch remake. Coming in at 6, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr.'s comeback to Hollywood was major news when he was cast as Iron Man in Marvel's first film in the MCU. It was huge for the actor who had openly struggled with addiction for years years, even spending some time in jail, and even being fired from his sitcom Ally McBeal after being arrested for trespassing into a neighbours property. He has an entire list of criminal things he has done in his past, so you can imagine he wouldn't be keen on talking about them, especially when he's promoting a huge blockbuster movie that is essentially salvaging his career. Well, the folks over at Channel 4 clearly didn't get that memo with them probing the actor, asking him about his bad boy days and even about his relationship with his father before the actor finally reaches his breaking point. And I just wondered whether you know, you, you you think you're free of all of that, or whether that's still something. I'm sorry, you... I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions. That's... Walking out, stating, "Sorry, it was just getting a little Diane Sawyery." Shots fired. Coming in at five, Charlie Sheen. Back in 2011, Charlie Sheen gave a somewhat questionable interview on the Today Show about his firing from the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men. He discussed his recovery from addiction, but appeared completely erratic and unhinged while doing so. Abusing alcohol. It's their show. 
epic behavior. Um, after reading about that, then they observed the guy hitting every mark, nailing every every line, every joke. Not only did he make the word winning iconic and somewhat of a meme, but he also coined the phrase tiger blood, which is apparently what's running through his veins. Of course, as we know, Sheen was fired from the show for bad mouthing the creator Chuck Glory, which he discussed in this very strange interview, making the bold claim that his passion is often perceived as anger. Dude, there was nothing passionate about your remarks. Get a grip. Coming in at four, Kanye West. What could he have possibly done? Well, I think you know. And if not, well, you're in for a treat. Back in 2009 at the Video Music Awards, folks were happily in their seats watching on as Taylor Swift was announced as the winner for Best Female Video for her work on You Belong to Me. She was happy, others were happy, however, not everyone, and certainly not Kanye West, who had to express openly on the stage how unhappy he was. Kanye took to the stage, grabbed the award and the mic from Taylor's hand, stating, Taylor, I'm really happy for you. I'll let you finish, but Beyonce has one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. The room went silent, everyone was cringing in discomfort, and of course, the camera cuts to Beyonce, perhaps cringing more than anyone. Kanye then left the stage, forcing Taylor to have to deal with the cleanup. Thankfully, Kanye was booted out of the award show for his antics, which resulted in the Is Kanye OK trend that circulated around the internet for a while. Meanwhile, Taylor was crying backstage. But hey, at least she won. Coming in at three, Shia LaBeouf. Everyone loves Jerry. Jerry's Deli is one of the greatest places to grab a sandwich in downtown LA. However, back in 2017, it seems Shia LaBeouf went there for an entirely different reason. He was having a few drinks, until those drinks became a few too many. And when Shia asked the bartender for some french fries, he refused. The actor proceeded to call the server the N word, but it didn't end there. These racist tirades happened once again, but this time when he was pulled over in Georgia, with Shia proceeding to tell the officer, you're going to hell, straight to hell bro. Both incidents negatively impacted Shia's career with it becoming public knowledge that some casting directors are too scared to hire him because they don't know what they're going to get. Coming in at 2, Christian Bale. Remember the film Terminator Salvation? Yeah, me either. But apparently it was a thing that happened and we all seemingly missed it. For the best, probably. Well, anyway, back in February 2009, while on the set of this god-awful movie, Christian Bale had a little hissy fit. During one particular scene, a director of photography entered Bale's field of view while he was filming. So what did he do? He shut it down, stating, what the F are you walking right through? What the F is it with you? What don't you effing understand? You got any effing idea about, hey, it's effing distracting having somebody walking up behind Bryce in the middle of the effing scene. Give me an effing answer. Why don't you get it? Yeah, that happened. What don't you get about it? I was looking at the light. Oh, good for you. Lesson number one, if you ever find yourself working alongside Christian Bale, don't walk into a shop. Don't even look his way. Better yet, just leave the building and don't return. Although I will give it to Bale, he had his entire meltdown while doing an American accent. I applaud that. And finally, coming in at number one, Tom Cruise. Of course, could anything possibly top Tom Cruise's infamous and bat crazy interview back in 2005 on the Oprah Winfrey show? No, definitely not. Back in 2005, Cruise was on the top of the world, promoting his newest film, The War of the Worlds, directly by Steven Spielberg. However, things didn't go quite according to plan during his interview with Oprah, who proceeded to ask him about his relationship with actress Casey Holmes. Cruz clearly couldn't read the room because he proceeded to stand up on the sofa and jump up and down, spouting out his love for Holmes. Now, the audience cheered along, but most viewers were uncomfortable and a little scared. Following the incident, his public image took a hit, with Cruz coming off unstable, with folks focusing more on his Scientology beliefs and his bizarre antics. 